All right, so we are going to put in the very first rivet. Uh, so a pretty exciting moment here. I'm trying to do this without screwing it up. Uh, so I have the mag the uh, magnetic squeezer ready here. Um, I use this little test run guy here just to get it at least about in the right area. This is a little bit thinner material uh, than what's being used on the doubler here. Uh, but let's see how it goes. All right, first rivet is complete. Pretty cool. There it is right there. And uh, I think it could be a little bit, oops, kick the camera. Could be a little bit uh, squished in more. This little gauge here, what this does, let me make sure this is gonna be in focus and let me get behind the camera. Um, what this does is since this is a number four rivet, you go over to the number four section there. And the idea is if it fits inside of that hole, um, then it's going to be too small of a, uh, of a shop head. So it needs to be squished more. This you'll see here is sitting at the surface. It's not allowing me to go any deeper there. And then the side, this little notch cut on the side there, uh, what that does is it tells you if your rivet is squished too much. So you'll see, kind of hard to get in frame here. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of light under there uh, where it's just about the right amount. I think I could go maybe a little bit more. We'll see on this next rivet here, um, but I'm happy. This is definitely within spec of, uh, of what's required of the rivets, which is awesome. We'll keep going. All right, so not too far in, and I already get to drill out my first rivet. Um, it looks like it got a little bit crooked, and uh, you may see it. I don't know if it's going to focus or not, um, but this rivet right here got pushed a little bit to the side at an angle uh, to where the pneumatic squeezer can't overcome the uh, resistance there. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that out real quick, and it'll be my first, first official drill out on the plane, so that'll be fun. There it is. Yeah, so basically we drilled out just uh, just through the shop head there, and then was able to put a one eighth inch punch in there and kind of wiggle it around until the uh, the rivet snapped off. And then the tail piece is still sitting there, but he should just pop right out. Yeah, there we go. Cool. One thing I did do, which was noted in the uh, in the beginning of the workbook there when, with regards to removing rivets, um, I did practice a couple of times on that scrap piece before I started with the build on uh, this guy here. Uh, but one thing I did do that they mentioned to do was I got a very cheap, or they didn't mention to get cheap ones, but got a super cheap uh, set of, uh, of uh, dikes from Harbor Freight and ground them down. So you'll see on the backside, uh, ground that down just with the grind the um, just that circular stone over there. Anyways, ground it down so I can get it really, really flush with the workpiece uh, to make removing rivets very easy. And I think this was like two dollars at Harbor Freight, so I will not, uh, I won't regret doing that. All right, let's see if we can do this again. Try doing it from uh, down here this time. There's something up. I think I may not have enough air pressure. No, I do. Hmm. Feels like I'm really maxing this, uh, maxing the squeezer out, which is very strange. Going down a little bit less deep than before. I know it gets most of its power at the uh, top portion of the stroke, so maybe that's it. No, he's not happy. All right, 
so I just did some Googling's and I found out that it is a common issue um, with these pneumatic squeezers, especially when dealing with the um, one eighth rivets, um, especially the dash fives or the, uh, the longer rivets. Um, so it was mentioned in the forums online to squeeze it halfway first, get the most out of the, uh, that last burst of energy from the pneumatic squeezer, then go ahead and adjust it out, then squeeze it in further. Kind of a pain in the butt, uh, but I'm just glad to know that it's kind of a known issue with these larger rivets. Uh, so we'll jam through these next two and then that will be it for here. And then we'll get to the, the flush head ones. Um, but yeah, I was super worried that I had an issue with this, this uh, pneumatic squeezer, but glad to hear that everyone suffers together. So we're up to step number six on section six, page four, uh, which is this one here. So we're looking forward to this one for, uh, for quite a while. So finally being able to solidify all this. Um, I will have to still jump back to countersink uh, these holes here for the bottom hinge bracket. The part still hasn't, or the uh, countersinking bit still hasn't come in the mail yet. Uh, but I don't think that'll be an issue doing countersinking after the fact, um, since it shouldn't be creating any kind of burrs or anything like that going underneath especially if I have it all riveted up, um, up until that point, it should keep it nice and sealed. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. I already put one there just to test it out. I figured out why this was, uh, not why, but I figured out a way around the whole um, issue with this uh, squeezing these larger rivets. I turned up the PSI to 105 PSI. It says online or in the manual too that 90 is the where you're supposed to have it at in the forums online. Uh, I saw some people mentioning that around 100, 105 uh, pounds is is uh, the secret to being able to do these larger rivets. Uh, but since I've increased the pressure, shouldn't have or haven't had any issues there. So we'll, uh, we'll get to it. All right, so super quick build update regarding tooling. Uh, number one, you'll see this one here, this rivet um, has JB Weld on top. So what actually happened there was I countersunk it too deep. I freaked out, I called Van's support line um, and they were super calm and <laughs> gave me uh, some clear direction for getting that one in there. Summed up, they recommended just putting a little bit of epoxy or in this case I had some JB Weld, so I made another one here as well. Uh, but you can see that it's just a little bit of a, a thicker layer of JB Weld on top. And that allows it uh, allows the tooling to uh, to catch the top and sink it down in versus uh, having a little bit of play there. So that was super easy to do. The other update I have is regarding these countersink cutters here. So this is the original one that I received uh, from Cleveland uh, Aircraft Tools. And the interesting thing about it, let me see if I can pull it up on my phone here. Um, but you'll see it was for this one here. Which I'm not sure if it'll it'll focus or not. Uh, but countersink cutter 8 for number 19 drill size for number 8 screw. Anyways, this one is marked, the one that was sent originally is marked number 8, but it is way too big. So it actually has the head diameter of a number 10, so it ended end up being pretty sloppy. So they kindly sent another one over. It does have a different number on it, so it uh, shows here number 19 size, which um, does indeed fit inside of that hole there. Um, so I'll be sending this one back to them, but now I have countersink cutter so we can move forward with the build. So with that, let's get to it. Right there. So. 
Like I mentioned, I'm trying to keep this uh, manufactured head side out. That way, um, this will go here, that'll go onto the rib there, and that way, in case I ever do have to drill this out, if I screw this up, I can come out here this way with the drill versus having to find some way with like a really low clearance drill or something. Anyways, it's gonna be the easiest from the outside here. So what I'm having to do is since then I have, since I have to have that cupped face on my side to fit inside that head there, I'm having to sneak up on it. So hopefully you can see from that angle there, let's see if I can flip this around, um, that I can't just fully push it up against it because then I'm kind of binding here on the actual yoke head. So instead I'm having to chase it down and kind of creep up on it lightly with pressure. I don't want to screw this up while I'm trying to talk, but I have to pretty much find it and keep like a real feather, uh, feather trigger on this thing. Make sure it's centered so I don't end up with like a squished head. And then, then I can chunk it. So anyways, um, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but I'm thinking that'll make it easier. If anyone knows any easier way to do these here, let me know. I think there are on the market, um, like the yokes that go around things, I think for the, the longer on yoke, I, mean, I know there's yokes out there, but if there's any other way other than just buying a new yoke or if there's any other products out there, let me know. Um, but this will be a little bit slow moving here. I'm not sure if this will be the theme going forward with the rest of the plane, if I'm just going to give up and start putting the manufactured head on the backside um, just for the sake of doing things easily. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. time of the uh, whole stretch and pull method. Um, so, lesson learned. Start on one side and just work your way around. Alright, so the battery has about 16% on it. I wanted to get at least a quick shot of this uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So what we're doing is um, riveting the whole thing. So I removed, I removed this bottom piece here so I can reach inside with the back of the bucking bar. And I uh, went ahead and riveted the first one. What we're doing is moving forward, setting the instructions to move forward from this, uh, uh, from this spar here, moving forward. So I'm just gonna alternate every side just to make sure I don't get any, get any kind of a twist or anything in it. So I already got that first one set, tested it with the gauge, and it's absolutely perfect. So super pumped. Um, so yeah, I'll get this thing moved around to the other side and go from there. I'm gonna lose battery again on that, uh, on that GoPro. I do need to find some way to hook it up and keep it charging as I'm recording. Um, it seems to be a theme here with the battery. Uh, but at least you'll be able to see the first rivet set. I may just put a time lapse up there on the uh, on the wise camera. So we'll have something to put in the video here. Uh, but yeah, I'll quit talking and get to it. As hard as I can't see the rivet, so I'm having to feel around with the tungsten bar to see where that rivet may be. That feels good. I'll double check with the gauge. And I'm still learning how to use uh, that rivet gun, so I'm still having to check. Check every time. But at least the cool thing with the gauge is I can kind of rock it around on it and feel if I have the, the right amount of head protruding. Alrighty, so sure enough, I did lose camera battery. Um, so here's a quick time lapse of the remainder of the night there, getting that front skin put on. 
Um, I am going to end the video here, or at least after this next clip here, uh, which I did not get any audio for. Uh, so for some reason, the audio or the uh, mic was not plugged in. But I think what I was going over here was just how I put the rivets in, moving back to front, alternating sides. You'll see the bottom rib is still missing there. I had that out to finish up uh, or to get, gain access to the inside of the skin. So this next video will be uh, fully enclosing everything, getting that rib put in place, and uh, yeah, having a finalized, ready-to-go airplane part. Uh, which is pretty cool to have. So we'll see you in the next video. If you made it this far, really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or any feedback or anything that's on your mind, comment down below. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Looking forward to uh, seeing you in this next video here.